died in life. Thanks for the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices. Sing red, white, blue, never give up. You represent America. I've been praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at Here are some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. Tories, they're going through the mail. Then we must fix the mail system. If we can't trust the post, how are we to freely express ourselves? This load of mail contains several important dispatches to General Washington. They must not fall into British hands. Dearest Sarah, you wrote that you would send a letter to me every day, yet I have not received one in ages. I pray that you are well. I have not heard from your father either, but I know mail service to the Ohio frontier is non-existent. Now here is the message I most urgently wish you to receive. Please remain in Philadelphia. Now that war has broken out, that is the best way to ensure that our family will one day be happily and healthily reunited. Although I am comforted that your care is in the sure hands of Dr. Franklin. I do hope dearly to hear from you soon. Your loving mother. Whoever said no news is good news wasn't in the newspaper game. There must be something you could write about. Maybe, but we haven't heard from any of our correspondents in two weeks. Look what I found in the street! Litter? A letter! The postman must have dropped it. Let me see. You shouldn't read somebody else's mail. We have to deliver it to the rightful owner. But we are the rightful owner. It's addressed to the Pennsylvania Gazette. It's news, right? Am I right? Oh boy, ask and ye shall receive. A report about British troop movements. The Redcoats are moving south from Boston. Are you sure? Who sent it? The Fox. That's a strange name. Could be a spy. Or it could be code. Who cares? We finally have a story, and I got it for us. Maybe Henri's right. At least it's something. Come on, Moses. Let's dust off the printing press. I'm looking for a Sarah Phillips. We've got a Sarah Phillips. Is she here? I'm carrying a letter for her. Henri, go get Sarah. Who do you think I am? Your assistant? Yes. I'll get Sarah. You're a captain? Captain Hodges, at your service. And you're carrying the mail? I'm on my way to rejoin General Washington's troops in Boston. I was entrusted with this letter during my trip to Fort Pittsburgh. I bet that's from Sarah's father. We have news, Captain. Big news. British troops are moving south from Boston. That can't be true. It's true. It's right here in this letter. Do you know this Fox person? No, but it's addressed to us. We're putting out a special edition of the Gazette to spread the word. I wouldn't do that. Do you see this letter mark? Looks like an F. It is an F. I don't understand. What does it mean? It's code. There's a secret message hidden somewhere inside. I don't see any secret message. You can't see it. The real message is between the lines, written in invisible ink. Invisible ink? Both sides are using invisible ink. In case a letter is lost or captured, the Redcoats would like nothing more than for you to print this in your paper. Why? They want us to think they're moving south 
so we'll be unprepared when they spring their real plan. We almost fell for their trap! You must be very careful about the mail. It can't be trusted. The British control it. How does this invisible ink work? I mean, what good is a secret message if nobody can see it? There's a special treatment. We'll need a man of science to help us. I know just the man. The letter F means fire. If it was marked with an A, I'd have to treat the letter with acid to make the invisible ink visible. Gather round. The invisible ink is a mixture of ferrous sulfate and water. The heat from the candle oxidizes the mixture and makes it possible to read what is written. That's fantastic! Very clever! What does the secret message say? Exactly opposite of what they wanted you to know. The British are not leaving Boston. It will be up to General Washington to force them out. There you are! Somebody wanted to see me? Sarah Phillips? Yes? I've carried this a long way. It's from my father. He's on the Ohio frontier. Oh, thank you. Of course. And now I must be on my way. Be careful, all of you. It's only the second letter I've gotten from him since I've been here. What does he say? When is he coming back? Is he all right? He doesn't say. And this letter is two months old, and I can't write him back to ask. There's no mail service to the frontier. And I can't even tell Mother I've heard from Father, because she isn't getting the letters I send her. She's not? You write to her every day. But they're not getting through. Captain Hodges said the British control the mail. I'm going to investigate. And I'm going to assist and investigate. Tories! <laughs> They're going through the mail. It's an offense, an outrage. Ben, someone went through my mail. It's an offense, an outrage. Fences can be mended, Mr. Adams. My comments about Mr. Dickinson, as critical, even petty as they were, were never meant for publication. Whoever stole my letter printed it to humiliate me and drive a wedge between Massachusetts and Pennsylvania. Here comes Mr. Dickinson now. Perhaps you can make peace with him. Mr. Dickinson, may I have a word with you, please? He's as stubborn as I am. Can you blame him, John? You called him a piddling genius. Yes, in a private letter. Ben, we must fix the mail system. If we can't trust the post, how are we to freely express ourselves? The publication of my letter hurt our cause and aired a division in our ranks just when it's most important for us to show unity of purpose. Order, gentlemen, order! A letter that I wrote to General James Warren was also intercepted. Stolen is a better word. Yes, stolen by the Tories and published in the Boston papers. A personal letter, mind you, full of blasphemous opinions and conspiratorial outbursts. You must learn to control your temper. I admit I have a defective character. However, Dr. Franklin, you designed the Colonial Postal Service at the request of the Crown. And now a man can't write a word without risking it appearing in print. <laughs> Order! Dr. Franklin, since you are the father of modern postal practices, I move you be appointed head of a committee to devise a new colonial postal service, independent of the British Crown. In the meantime, we mustn't use the royal postal system, unless you would be comfortable with King George himself reading what you've written. In the meantime, we have to find a way to get this load of mail through to New York. We can't spare another soldier. I'll take it. That's very brave of you, James, but it could be dangerous. I'll be careful. You'll have to be more than careful. Count on me, sir. 
I'm going to have to do just that. This low de mayo contains several important dispatches to General Washington. They must not fall into British hands. I'm going to. It's not safe. But you're carrying a letter to my mother with news of father. I want to see with my own eyes that it gets on the mail boat for London. Besides, I'm twice the rider you are. You are not. And two. Are not. Sarah, if our colonial army possessed an ounce of your pluck, we'd have nothing to fear. We'll see who's twice the rider. I want you both to follow Route 1, the postal road connecting Philadelphia to New York, which I established 20 years ago as Royal Postmaster General. I set up a series of milestones that will lead you to New York. The milestones are placed at regular intervals all the way to Boston. My postal system was a model of efficiency, but that was before our current troubles. Shouldn't we have passed another milestone by now? Or two? We're in New Jersey. Maybe they don't go this far. Dr. Franklin said he set them up all the way to Boston. Isn't that one? Oh, no! Oh. They're the ones who bribed the postman. They're Tories. They're waiting to intercept the mail. What are we going to do? Maybe we should turn around and go back. Then the mail won't get through. General Washington won't get his dispatches. Maybe they'll let us through. But there's a British soldier with them. British soldiers are not monsters, you know. That's because you're British. May I remind you you're also British? OK, have it your way. Why don't you go ahead? I have to water my horse. I'll meet you at the blockade. Hurry. <laughs> Whoa. Now, why would a pretty young lass such as yourself be out riding alone? Thank you, sir. You are most kind. I am not riding alone. My friend James is watering his horse. He'll be along. And what is the nature of the business that takes you to New York? Well, you see... Ah, here he comes. Whoa! Now that he's here, may we pass? I'd still like to know the nature of your business. We're visiting a sick friend. Sarah got a letter that was weeks old saying that a dear friend of ours may perish soon. We only hope we're not too late. Oh, well, in that case, please move along. We won't detain you further. Thank you, kind sir. Your servant, milady. That was a shameless teradiddle you told them about our perishing friend. I know. It was wrong. The truth would have done just as well. I was afraid to take the chance. James, you haven't got the mailbag. You think we would have made it through if I did? But where is it? Where they won't find it. James, what have you done with the mail? We'll sneak back for it when the sun goes down. You are shameless. Do you want your letter to get through or not? I want you to know that I disapprove of your deception with all my heart. What if we get caught? Now that we've lied, the consequences will be harsher, I'm sure. But you saw when we rode back through. They're gone now. Did you hear something? Sarah, quit worrying. We're almost there. <gasps> something you forgot to tell us. Run, Sarah! What have we here? So, you've led your friends here! It's not much farther where we left the horses. Just keep running! I told you this would be trouble. Oh, we can't make it. We've got to. Keep on them! They've got a load of mail!
coming with us. By what right are you detaining us? Like she said, by what right? By what right are you carrying the mail? You don't look like royal postal employees. I'm sure you stole the mail from those men. I don't care if you did, so you might as well admit it. They probably stole it themselves. I purposely set off that gunpowder explosion to distract them so we could rescue the mail. Whose side are you on, anyway? We are volunteers. We're on the side of helpless colonists. So are we. And you prove it by stealing their mail? Have you ever heard of Dr. Benjamin Franklin? Who hasn't? We're carrying the mail for him. Have you some proof of that? I do. Dr. Franklin asked us to deliver these letters to New York. Well, this is Franklin's signature. So you are official couriers. That is a very different matter. Congress has asked Dr. Franklin to look into the possibility of forming an independent postal system for the colonies. Did everybody hear that? We're breaking away from the royal postal system! Wonderful! <laughs> you have no idea what good news that is. Those Tories wanted the mail. I'm sure they did. And may we ask who you are? You may, if you can keep a secret. I can. And you? Of course. We began some years ago as the New Jersey Committee of Correspondents. We were a volunteer organization dedicated to spreading news throughout the colonies. Our mission was to unite the colonies through better communication. We sent messages to the colonies about the British threat. We copied press reports and intelligence messages gathered from our spies, and we spread them throughout the colonies. Now we still work together, keeping tabs on Tory spies, like the men who tried to steal your mail. Then you'll let us carry our bag to New York? Let you? We'll help you. We'll supply an armed escort all the way to New York. You see, I told you my plan was a good one. But you could have gotten us in trouble. She's not kidding. The British would gladly imprison any one of us in this room for what we're doing. You two amaze me with your courage. You're too kind. He's right, Sarah. You showed some real bravery. Why not? I've got you to inspire me, even if I don't always approve of your tricks. All the Committee of Correspondence wants to do is spread the truth. The truth is important. It's everything. But if the truth they are spreading leads to treason and actions against the Crown... It's still truth, and they should be allowed to spread it. Well, I don't approve of the way you lied. We wouldn't have gotten this far. I believe in truth, not lies. Look, we're almost to New York because of my lie. We were almost stopped because of your lie. We're almost to New York because of the New Jersey Committee of Correspondence. So you do approve of what they're doing? I suppose I do, in spite of myself. We'll make a patriot out of you yet. I already am a patriot. At least in New York, we'll be back among subjects still loyal to the king. They're not all loyalists. We've brought the mail all the way from Philadelphia. <laughs> this entire mailbag has been unseen by British eyes. <laughs> Why are we stopping off in this tavern to brag about our exploits? This is the end of the line, Sarah. The mail is distributed here. The volunteer mail carriers divide up the letters at the bar according to destination points and fan out to the different parts of town to deliver them. What about my letter to my mother? It's going to London, not a part of New York. One of the volunteers takes the overseas letters to the harbor and puts them on the first ship headed across the Atlantic. So we've done it? Yes. My mother will get her letter? She will, Sarah. You can count on it. James, I'm so happy I could kiss you. Sarah, please. I've suffered enough at the hands of the British. Dr. Franklin, your report is most complete. I suggest that we waste no time in naming a Postmaster General. Because of his expertise, experience, and genius, and as a slap in the face to the British Crown which saw fit to remove him from his post, I put into nomination the name of Dr. Benjamin Franklin for the Office of Colonial Postmaster General. All in favor? Aye! All opposed? Then it's
it's unanimous. May I present to you the first man in history to hold the title independently of any king or royal principality, Postmaster General Franklin. Thank you, fellow conspirators. I accept this honor if for no other reason than to make the king's blood boil. Dr. Franklin, what will be your first official act? To establish a line of posts from Falmouth in New England to Savannah in Georgia, and to employ a fleet of trustworthy, incorruptible men. And neither rain, sleet, snow, nor dark of night will keep them from their appointed rounds. Twenty seven, July, seventeen seventy five. Dearest mother, I have read your last letter thirty times, which is one time for each day I waited for it. I am so relieved that you received my letter about father. I am relieved that you received any letter from me at all. Thanks to James and Dr. Franklin, I have a new appreciation of the importance of the postal service and of communication in general. How can the colonists hope to survive these difficult times without communication? Even if I don't agree with all of their stated aims, I do so admire the work that Dr. Franklin has done and continues to do in an effort to make this gigantic world a little smaller so that, even if we are separated by geography, we may all be united in understanding. Franklin, named Postmaster General of New Independent Colonial Postal Service.